Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Phoebe if you are new here. If you have been here, thank you for sticking around. Today's video we are going to be talking about polycystic ovarian syndrome. I know it's a little different from the makeup tutorials that I've been dropping, but as we all know, this page is a health, fitness, lifestyle, and beauty page, so I do have to incorporate health and fitness. Um, a lot of you may not know, but I've had PCOS since I was 13 years old. I was diagnosed at about 14, so I've been living with it for about 16 to 17 years. That's telling my age. Um, but I no longer really struggle with PCOS like I did when I was younger. I can go, I think I can confidently say that I have PCOS and PCOS does not have me. And what I mean is when you are diagnosed with PCOS, there's this feeling of like being lost because it's, it's not really a disorder that you can see. It's not an illness that you can see. It's an invisible illness. So when you're first diagnosed with it, you feel lost, you feel alone. In my case, getting diagnosed at the age of 14, I was definitely alone because I got diagnosed in 2004. There was not a lot of information about PCOS back in 2004, so I literally was just on my own. It was my mother and I, as I've um, said in previous videos. We literally just did everything on our own. After my diagnosis, I didn't even start treating my PCOS until four years later when I was going off to college. Um, but nowadays, I feel like PCOS has... I don't want to say grown, but there's been so much more research done for PCOS that it's helping a lot more women. Now, there's not that much information out there, but I feel like if you are newly diagnosed, you have more information um, out there for yourself than I did when I was diagnosed. Today, I'm just answering some questions that I received on my fitness page. If you are not following my fitness page, go check it out. It's Breaking Up With Obesity. That's what my channel used to be called before I changed it to just Phoebe. But yes, check out my fitness page. I had some ladies send in some questions and today what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to answer all those questions that I received because I feel like it's more helpful to answer your questions than to just give you guys background history about how I've been living with PCOS. Does that make any sense? So one of the first questions that I got was the hair removal process. I share openly about my facial hair. I'm not ashamed, I'm not scared. It does not bother me to share with other women that I do have a lot of facial hair. How I get rid of it is I use either Veet or I use Nier. I coat my skin in some protective oil and then I apply the Veet or Nier on my face. I usually keep it on for two to three minutes and then I just wipe it off. I do that every two to three weeks and it is tedious. It is very annoying to have to do it every two weeks. But I can't afford laser hair removal and so I'm going to do the cheapest option. And the cheapest option right now is Veet and Nair. So like I said, I have a video showing how I remove my facial hair. I will add it to the end screen of this um, video so that you all can check it out. But I just coat my skin in a protective oil, add the Veet or Nair cream on, set my timer, do a little dance, do something to distract myself, and then take it off and wash my face and go ahead with my skincare routine. That's all I do. I don't do anything else that's special. I don't do anything expensive because your girl ain't got it. <laughs> Next question. Persistent stomach fat. A lot of women blame their weight on PCOS. I'm here to tell you PCOS is not the reason you're overweight. It's you. And I know it you're gonna be like, no, it's the PCOS. No, it's not. Because there are women with PCOS who are stick thin. And there are women with PCOS who are, like me, fat. It's not because of PCOS that you're overweight. If you are overweight, it's a symptom of PCOS. Um, the one major cause of being overweight and having PCOS is insulin resistance. So more than likely, you are insulin resistant. It's not the PCOS that's making you fat. And a lot of women hide behind that. And I'm just here to say enough is enough. You cannot keep blaming your weight on PCOS. It's not PCOS. It's you. If you are looking at your lifestyle and it does not look like a lifestyle that will allow you to lose weight and maintain that weight loss, then you cannot blame it on PCOS. You have to take the blame. You have to take the ownership of your weight. It's not PCOS. I'm sorry. Next question is... Does keto help? Keto helps tremendously. I did keto for two years and then I stopped. And the only reason I stopped is because 
I was going through a major bout of depression, which also comes with PCOS. So I stopped keto and I just started eating carbs all over. But one thing I will say with keto is it does help tremendously. It balances your hormones. It's, that's a very true fact. Don't let anyone tell you that it doesn't. It balances your hormones. It helps with your insulin. It regulates your insulin. And then if you are fasting and doing keto together, that is like a double, like, it's like, that's a powerhouse couple. Fasting and keto, a lot of people do not have to do keto. Keto is not for every woman that has PCOS. But if you are considering keto to treat your PCOS or some of your PCOS symptoms, I say go for it. It works. That's my opinion. The next lady with PCOS may not agree with me, but again, this is Phoebe's opinion because this is Phoebe's channel, okay? <laughs> next question, did you take metformin to reverse your symptoms? When I first started treating my PCOS when I was 18 years old, I got diagnosed at 14, I did not start treating it until I was 18. They did put me on metformin. I was taking 500 milligrams twice a day and it worked. But let me tell you what worked. It helped my period come and it helped me lose weight. How did it do that? With the weight loss, it curbed my appetite. So I wasn't eating as much as I wanted to. And when I did eat, I was so nauseous that it made me not want to eat anymore. So it was not only curbing my appetite, but it was making it too, like I was too, I was too nauseous to eat. Um, so that's what metformin did for me. It did get my cycle to start, but the minute I stopped taking metformin, it also stopped. So it didn't necessarily reverse my symptoms. It did, it did induce my cycle to come, but it was not the solution for my cycle to be regular. Um, I did lose weight with it, but that's because I wasn't eating. So a lot of doctors are quick to push metformin as the number one um, treatment for PCOS. And I'm just here to say it's not. If your doctor tells you your only option to treat your PCOS is metformin, go away. Run away, find another doctor, don't even see a PCP. Find an endocrinologist because they understand this more than a regular doctor will. Your primary care physician will probably not know as much about PCOS as an endocrinologist. My PCOS was not treated properly until I saw an endocrinologist and I literally owe everything to her because she is the reason that my cycle was regular. My skin went back to normal because I had patchy skin that felt like leather. Um, the facial hair was a lot. I had male pattern baldness. Um, it was bad. I was pushing 300 pounds. And it wasn't 300 pounds of muscle like nowadays where I'm mostly muscle. It was 300 pounds of just fat. And she quickly nipped that in the bud. And I just want to say thank you so much, Dr. Kundra, if you ever see this video. <laughs> the next question I have is, how do you know you have it besides going to the doctor? Are there any symptoms? There are symptoms, but I will say don't diagnose yourself by just seeing that you have patchy skin or you have your hairs falling out or you have love handles. I don't believe in self-diagnosis because I know a lot of females who've come to me and be like, I think I have PCOS. PCOS is not something that you just think up. No. There are ways to be diagnosed and I would say get properly diagnosed before you walk around saying you have it because PCOS is not a scapegoat. It's not something that you should claim just because you can't lose weight or just because your cycle is irregular. That's not the case. There are many things that can cause your cycle to be irregular. There are many things that can cause you to gain weight without any explanation. It's not just PCOS. So please do not self-diagnose. Go to a doctor, get some blood work done, and get diagnosed the proper way. If you follow my fitness page, at Breaking Up With Obesity, I have a post on it that tells you the several ways that you get tested in order to be diagnosed with PCOS. Definitely check it out. Next question, what supplements are you on and are they for PCOS? So I do take um, vitamins every day. Some of them are to help with PCOS and some of them are just to fill in the gaps that I have in my diet. Um, I take vitamin D because African-American women are naturally, African-Americans are naturally very low in vitamin D, so I take that. I take iron, that's associated with my PCOS. I take um, a multivitamin. I take vitamin C because of COVID. <laughs> um, uh, what else do I take? I take probiotics, I take digestive enzymes. It's not just for PCOS, it's just for overall health. Now, it does help with PCOS, but that's not all. I think the only thing that I take that's directly from my PCOS is the iron because I am a bit anemic and then I have like brittle nails and 
When my nails start like breaking and doing all crazy stuff, I know it's definitely because my iron is low. Um, so I do supplement, but I don't really take anything in specific for PCOS because I don't really think there's a supplement out there that is directly for PCOS. Some people may say otherwise, this is what I'm saying. Next question. What's been the biggest struggle you've had with PCOS? I would say the biggest struggle I have had was the mood swings and anxiety and depression. A lot of people are worried about how you look when you have PCOS, but they're not too concerned about what is going on internally. PCOS is a mental battle because yes, you do suffer from depression with PCOS. It is one of the symptoms. Anxiety is one of the symptoms. And that's why when a lot of women come to me on my fitness page, I always tell them the best thing to do is to get a therapist. You cannot do this on your own. It's not worth trying because it sucks. I've had anxiety attacks in grocery stores. I've been depressed where I just stay in bed all day. I go to work, come home and get in bed. Or I go to work, step at the corner store, get a lot of junk food, come eat it in my bedroom and go to sleep. Um, it's not fun, but you have to be honest with yourself. It is a symptom of PCOS. They are a symptom of PCOS. Anxiety attacks, um, mood swings, depression. I used to suffer from really bad mood swings and I've mentioned this before. I used to lash out on my siblings and it was something that I could control but didn't necessarily know how to control until I took ownership of it. Although it is a symptom of my PCOS, I am my own person. I can learn to control those mood swings. So over the years, I have worked on that and I'm still working on it. It's not something that you will ever just grasp at once. It's something that you grow through um, and that's what I'm currently doing. I'm growing through all my PCOS symptoms even 17 years after getting diagnosed. Next question, facial hair management. I already talked about that. I just use Nier and Veet uh, every two weeks. Sometimes I could go like three weeks but most of the time it's every two weeks. When I do see my weight creeping up in a very unhealthy manner, the facial hair starts growing faster and that's an indication that my hormones are out of whack. Um, that's the one thing that I do love about my body. It tells me when my PCOS is going out of control because different things start happening. My moods start changing like really bad. My facial hair comes back thicker and it's more stubborn. It's harder to get it off. It grows back every week. Annoying. Um, weight loss. PCOS and weight loss is you have to find what works for you. I've said keto works, low carb works. One thing that I have noticed with women who have PCOS that are overweight is you can benefit from a low carb diet. You do not have to do keto, but a low carb diet may be beneficial. It helps with um, insulin resistance. It helps with the stomach fat. It helps with the facial hair. In my opinion, I don't know what anybody else will say, but this is my opinion. This is what I've tried over the years and it's helped. Um, so I would definitely consider that if you are overweight and looking to lose weight because of PCOS, I will try a low carb diet and then transition to keto if you want to try that. But I think a low carb diet is best. A lot of women with keto do avoid dairy. I don't. Oh baby, no, that ain't gonna work. I like dairy and I don't plan to stop um, because it doesn't affect me. I don't really break out from it. It doesn't cause any adverse reactions for me. So I still eat it. For other women, cutting out dairy is the best way for them to help treat some of their PCOS symptoms. With PCOS, the best thing to do is just trial and error. That's all you can do. One woman's way of treating her PCOS is not gonna work for you. So you literally have to try and figure out what is best for you. Um, the next question that I have, irregular periods. Again, that means your hormones are not in um, sync. That means your hormones are out of whack. So you either have to go see your doctor and see if they're going to put you on any medications or you have to regulate your hormones. I think the number one way of getting your hormones under control is to get your insulin under control. And an easy way to do that is intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting works. I don't care what anyone says, it works. If you are suffering from irregular periods, I would say give that a try. Fast and then cut your carbs. That's just my opinion. Again, I am not a medical professional. This is what I've tried over the years and it's what's worked for me. I have not missed a cycle in eight, nine years, I think. Never. 
and that's all that I've done. You know, I work out daily, not anymore because of my injury, but I work out daily. I follow a low carb slash keto lifestyle. Right now I'm doing strictly low carbs. Um, I get enough sleep. I manage my stress the way that I can best. That's another thing that you definitely have to be cautious of. Stress management is so important with PCOS because stress can cause your hormones to go out of whack. And I keep saying out of whack, but I just mean like it will throw the balance off. If your stress is not well ma uh, managed, it will throw you off. Like it will literally disrupt your body. So you have to find ways to manage your stress. For me, working out was my stress management. Sleeping is my stress management. Some people meditate. <laughs> my mind is overactive, so I cannot meditate if I, I just can't. But you have to find a way to um, manage your stress. It is so important. With keto, I mean with PCOS, the number one way to really treat it on your own is to manage your stress work on your nutrition and then find a form of exercise that you like those three things and you're good you do not have to throw back pills powders any of that all you have to do is just focus on those three things nutrition stress management and exercise you have to exercise i'm sorry you don't have to lift weights you don't have to do hours of cardio but you have to find a form of exercise that you can do without feeling like someone is putting too much stress on you if you like walking go for a walk if you like yoga do some yoga if you like boxing box find something that you can do without feeling forced to do it that's the thing about pcos Find a lifestyle that works for you. Do not compare yourself to other women. Do not compare your symptoms to other women. Do not compare yourself to women who are slender and have PCOS because you do not know what their battle is. Do not compare your, yourself to women who are fertile with PCOS because PCOS can cause infertility. When you have PCOS, the best thing to do is to focus on you. Focus on yourself. Treat your symptoms. Treat your condition. Treat yourself. And then also remember that when you are diagnosed with PCOS, it's not a death sentence. It's not a terminal disease. PCOS does not have you. You have it. Okay? All right. That's all for today's Q&A. If you guys have any more questions regarding PCOS, please leave them in the comments box below. Um, give this video a thumbs up. Let me know what else you guys want to see regarding PCOS, fitness, health, or beauty. Um, thank you all so much for watching this video. I'm very passionate about sharing my PCOS story because as an African American woman, there are not many women out there that speak up for certain conditions. And I am here to speak up for PCOS because I don't see enough women that look like me sharing their story. So I'm going to continue sharing my story and helping as many people as I can with my story. And thank you all so much for joining me. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, thumbs up. Turn on the bell notification. See you all in the next video.